you know, I don't need the videotape to uh, see those attacks. I, I can still picture them and almost how they happened or what the individual looked like or what, what was taking place. I mean, I can remember that whole day. You can ask me what happened on April 23rd, I probably couldn't tell you, but I can tell you everything that happened on April 29th. The shadow of the L.A. riots and the insidious political and cultural climate that led to them still hangs over America 25 years later. Justice has become increasingly meaningless in a country where black people are hunted for sport by a militarized police force. And every time a new person is killed on camera, we hope for some change for someone to step in, for some measure to be taken to ensure that the people meant to protect us aren't itching for a reason to make us all villains. For so many of us, police corruption was just a plot in movies and TV shows. A fairy tale wrapped up by the time the credits rolled. Then the Rodney King beating happened, and it was a reality people could either ignore or confront. Suddenly those narratives looked less far-fetched. Ron Shelton's dark blue didn't make back its money got mixed reviews, but it's blistering tale of a bad cop who has to come to terms with a life spent on the wrong side of the law still leaves a mark 15 years later. Shelton made his name directing affable shaggy dog sports movies, films about heroes posing as losers. His images were pure Americana, debunking myths about the things we love and obsess over, but not so much that we couldn't still romanticize them. Dark Blue was one of his few forays outside of that comfort zone. He builds up ostensible hero Eldon Perry, played by a swaggering and still beautiful Kurt Russell, as a man sturdy enough to not be swayed by winds of change. He's a cop in Daryl Gates, Los Angeles. A man used to fabricating evidence, arresting innocent people, and covering up murders all for his superiors. Human life means nothing to him anymore. His wife fears him, and he's practically a legend to other cops. Those who hate him, and those who look up to him. Let's see what you got. It's, it's a little thin, I know. Look, Dina, these are some bad hombres. Look at this. This guy sodomized an 80-year-old woman for two days, okay? This one raped a little girl in front of her family during a home invasion. I mean, come on, read the file. Calling the circumstantial would be a compliment. I can't issue on this. No judge in his right mind's gonna sign oh, it. Oh, we're not going to trial, for Christ's sake. It's a search warrant. Hey, there's probable cause here. Don't bullshit me. I can't process this. Yeah, you can process it, Dana. And you will. And by tomorrow morning, those two young bucks will be dressed out and strapped across the hood of my Chevy. So says the playbook, Dina, so do it. Be a team player. Jesus Christ, man, you got Alzheimer's? You know the deal. You want to change it? Give me your phone. Do you have any shame? Well, I not do. <laughs> He's keeping the machinery of injustice alive so that white men can stay on top. Russell's performance is a thing of beauty. Sit down, Bobby. We're gonna find a couple of assholes and bury them with a jack of hearts. Listen, we cannot pin four murders on Patsy Zeldin. No fucking way. The real shooters that need to be taken off the streets, and you know it. Absolutely, 100% agree with you, Bobby. They're vermin and should be exterminated, but you got crime, and you got criminals. And if you're meticulous, maybe somehow you make a match. Whatever, we're in the getting shit done business. What are you talking about? You know who did it. Come on! Shelton, who also dealt with a charismatic racist in the movie Cobb. Lie after lie has been told about me. My entire life, I've been misunderstood. You... I'm the very fortunate young sports writer who has been chosen to tell the true story. Tack off. Keeps Russell's transcendent pinup glory intact, even if the hard living has started to crack his perfect exterior. His confidence begins to seem like perpetual nervousness. <laughs> There's no fucking witness, Jack. Yeah, you know, they witness, you know. He might dig up someone in the DA's office happy to file on YouTube for murder and conspiracy. Well, that's bullshit, Jack. Nobody saw shit. I'm holding it together, Ellen. You know, that's what I do. Hold things together. Whatever, Jack. Nobody saw shit. There's no witness. Nobody saw shit. You said that three times already. It looks as though his hatred and violence have finally started to age him. 
to curdle the looks and charm he once used to get his way. The harsh, unblinking photography by Barry Peterson and the angry, somber score by Terence Blanchard shows us a world lost to itself. A hair's breadth from implosion. There's something undeniably strange, disarming, and powerful about watching one of America's favorite leading men foam at the mouth, spewing racist dogma as he descends into a meltdown. His belief in himself as beyond good and evil is slowly pulled out from under him. Everyone deserts him. His godlike bosses turn on him. He learns that hatred has no loyalty. Every take that lasts a few seconds too long is like a length of rope that the characters use to hang themselves. Sheldon is transfixed by the hideousness perpetrated by these men, as committed to showing their ugliness as he was to showing the skill and honor of athletes. I, I was a teenager when the Watts riots uh, came around. And anyway, I, I can remember going out with my dad on the second night. And uh, there was this Woolworths that was burning, and, and I remember that there were these looters, you know, running in and out. And, and every time they'd run out, my dad would take them pot shot at him with this deer rifle he'd brought from home. Just... Anyway, he gave it to me and this looter ran out and I winged him in the arm and he ran back inside and that's when the, that's when the roof collapsed and the whole goddamn building caved in. I don't know, I guess they all burned up and nobody got out. I mean, I was raised up to be a gunfighter by a family of gunfighters. And I gotta tell you, I made a career at going after the worst, most dangerous, parasitic sons of bitches to walk this planet. And I was happier than the devil in hell because I'd fabricate evidence if I wanted to bring some asshole in or I'd, I'd lie on reports and I'd lie to investigators and I'd sure as hell stretch the truth in court. And uh, if anybody messed with us, we just, we just muscled them, right, Jack? Or, or blackmailed them. I mean, what the hell? Everybody's got a secret. It's a tough job, but I was, I was a good soldier. Last week, the president pardoned a racist sheriff undergoing trial for years of corruption, hatred, and unfair, bigoted practices. Our government and its police precincts are still run by the Eldon Perrys and Daryl Gates of the world, and thus, they have no authority over us. Those who don't see people as humans, equals, cannot govern us. Dark blue showed a hellacious world in freefall when thugs with badges felt no compunction about bending the world to conform to their disgusting design, so long as they stayed on top. Every town in America is back in that place now, whether they want to believe it or not. Our only hope is to scream back at those who don't value our lives. We exist. We matter. We won't be erased by white supremacists. We will never stand down. We will never stop. <laughs>